So I just seated on the occlusal, have the patient bite down, and if it pulls through without any resistance or with minimal resistance, I know that I've achieved the proper clearance or the clearance for that tab. So we'll start off with uh, shooting for one and a half millimeters of occlusal reduction. Again, I mentioned that the labs typically see under-reduced preps, particularly on the occlusal areas of the restoration. So even if we give that one and a half millimeters of clearance, again, it doesn't mean that the final thickness of the restoration would be one and a half millimeters throughout. And so that's one of the reasons why Bruxer has become such a, uh, a popular material in dentistry because of its high strength and without the need to have the bilayered materials. And that's why sometimes with bilayered restorations, if you're experiencing uh, fractures of that feldspathic porcelain, it's probably because uh, potentially not enough room for those multiple layers of material. So the reduction is very, very important. Something that I like to use to evaluate the clearance from the opposing are these clearance tabs. This is just one example from Kerr. How I like to use this, uh, using a articulating paper holder, I'll position that clearance tab between the prep and the opposing. So I just seat it on the occlusal, have the patient bite down, and if it pulls through without any resistance or with minimal resistance, I know that I've achieved the proper clearance or the clearance for that tab. Something that I like to do is, after I've created the axial reduction, is to use a periodontal probe and seat it on the shoulder of the margin. And once I'm applying apical pressure, I trace around the preparation. So I just circle around the prep circumferentially, and that's gonna give two areas of feedback. So if it traces around with that apical, apical stop around the entire prep, I know I've, I've achieved at least half a millimeter of reduction. So the diameter at the tip of these periprobes are typically half a millimeter. If it slides off the prep, I know I didn't create enough of that reduction. The second thing that it will tell us is how smooth the surface of the margin is. So once I've achieved that half a millimeter to a millimeter of reduction axially, uh, then we worry about the taper. Uh, so we wanna ensure that we have enough taper uh, so that these restorations can have a smooth path of insertion and smooth draw. Another area, once we've prepped the occlusal and axial surfaces of the preparation, we want to try to round over all of the internal angles. And sometimes it's, it's very difficult to do because once we bring those two surfaces together, where they meet that axial occlusal line angle typically is going to be a sharp area. So we want to just round it over and that's an example of uh, type of burr that mills the restorations out of the fast mill. It's a round ended tapered diamond. Something that we want to try to avoid uh, would be creating sharp areas and these anti-rotational or uh, retentive groove features on the preps. Again, because these restorations typically are milled now using that CAD CAM process, uh, the milling system has a much more challenging time adapting to those retentive grooves. And, in fact, if you are currently doing that with restorations or on your preps, uh, the labs typically block those out. Are you enjoying this instructional video? I hope so. If you'd like to receive additional clinical instruction with AGD and ADA approved CE credits, all at no charge, be sure to visit glidewelldental.com forward slash education, where in addition to over 60 on-demand clinical courses, you can also access our weekly webinars along with other valuable content.